today I have with me Dr. Pankuri. Uh, she did her MBBS from Malana Azad Medical College, New Delhi. And then she did her MD in Dermatology from Ames, New Delhi. And she's currently pursuing a senior residency from the same college. So in this video, we'll discuss about derma, dermatology, and what it entails, what are the future options, MD versus derma, the classical questions. So I'll begin, Pankuri. So the first question, what is uh, like, oh, what is the residency of dermatology and what does derma entail fu uh, in future? So yeah. Okay. So basically, dermatology is predominantly a medicine branch. It's a sub part of medicine, which is now a part, uh, as a separate uh, master's degree. So the one good thing is it is an end branch and we do not yet have uh, any other super specialization available within this. So we do not have to give an exam again. Yeah, uh, like me. And like me, him <laughs> and I think you, you already cleared one, right? Yeah, I cleared. But yeah, so yeah. So but unlike medicine, dermatology, unlike medicine, pediatrics or uh, surgery, this is an end branch. Yeah. Right. And it is again predominantly medical as far as the training is concerned. So. Uh, what I like about dermatology is that it is very uh, visually stimulating branch, it is very diagnostic and the dependence and reliance on investigations is much lesser than the other branches and uh, the more you see the more you learn so it is an experience based branch so as a first year you may not be able to pick up erythema, redness etc but as you learn more you will be able to pick up differences in color and we often get referrals from pediatrics other branches to basically look at their patients and pick up the visual clues that are available on their skin with regard to the systemic uh, changes so it's a very interesting branch in terms of actual examination of patients but again, predominantly medical. We do have emergencies in, uh, in dermatology, unlike what a lot of people think. Might think, yeah. Yes, so we get a lot of emergency referrals from pediatric oncology, pediatrics, uh, a lot, all the drug rashes, all the possible drug rashes, including SJS10, do come to us. And uh, we are trained in treating them. So uh, the training is predominantly medicine. When you come to practice, however, there are two very uh, different orientations towards practice that people tend to themselves specialized towards. So one is a medical dermatology practice where you are practicing basically as a physician. You sit in your OPD, patients come to you with different problems like children may come to him and uh, you diagnose, you give them treatment, you ask them to follow up and uh, the money you get is the consultation which is like any other medical branch. However, the other part is procedural dermatology which a lot more uh, number of dermatologists are now going towards which includes minor procedures like chemical peeling etc which was always there however you have bigger procedures like ingrown toenail surgeries you have uh, cyst excisions mole excisions and even bigger surgeries or interventions like botox fillers thread lifts and hair transplantation and vitiligo surgeries now as I have mentioned these uh, dermatologists are increasingly going towards these procedures which were traditionally originally done by plastic surgeons or surgeons so uh, people who, uh, who tend to do procedural dermatology are going to have a very different practice than those who are having a predominantly medical dermatology and although initially you might want to do both you will end up doing one of these and procedural dermatology is definitely more uh, commercially uh, viable because uh, apart from the consultation you're also getting the money for the procedure that you're doing and uh, if that is what you are oriented towards then your actual md or dnd or diploma will not cover it anyway so uh, which was your second question that between md dnb and ddvl which should be chosen so with respect to a procedural dermatology practice which again most of the dermatologists are going towards uh, all of us are on the same footing. So I've finished my MD from Ames, but if I want to do a practice in procedural dermatology, I will have to go for the same fellowship or the same duration of time that you might have to go for if you've done your uh, DNB or a DDVL or from whichever institute you've done it from. And the minor difference might be in terms of that I might get a slightly uh, more stipend or I might get paid, which you might have to pay for. But the amount of time that has to be invested has to be the same and where we reach in our practice is going to be the same. So in all, we can basically uh, consider the good points are that it's a uh, predominantly an end branch. Uh, it's more, uh, it's a growing branch where your practice is dependent upon you. Whether you want to go into a medical dermatology, be like a, no, a physician who looks at uh, the problems, or you can go into the procedural aspects. You do have this option, and uh, it's commercially more uh, attractive, and it's uh, going uh, booming uh, as a uh, as Pankuri had said. And uh, and as far as your degree is concerned, it doesn't matter whether you do your MD or DNB. Which brings me to the question, like you have already uh, told me, that MD and DNB doesn't matter in the long run, especially if you are going into private practice and you are going for procedural dermatology. Okay. Having said that, a lot of people are confused 
confuse ki where to do if they do are getting dnb what are the good dnb colleges if you can just tell some good dnb colleges that you know of uh, so we have arun cooper in navi mumbai that's good we have uh, hindu rao hospital in delhi that's also good and uh, we have a ddvl in molana azad medical college few seats but they are there and uh, it's a good training program so uh, if you are plan- planning to do a medical dermatology then it will make a slight difference between an md and a ddvl a md and dnb will not make a difference because the amount of time that you invest with the branch that is the important part so that is the same in both md and dnb also i think i would want to emphasize here that for the srship exam in aims the md and dnb are considered equivalent so somebody who has done a dnb can get through srship here and once you get to srship in a particular place nobody will question whether you had an md or a dnb to begin with so i don't think it makes a difference and uh, with respect to this branch a lot of it depends on how much you study during it so we can have somebody who's done an md who does not know as much as a dnb candidate because the dnb candidate has studied more and learned more so a lot one thing that a lot of people do like about dermatology is that it's like it has a good work life balance amongst the clinical branches and uh, uh, at the same point of time it is a clinical branch uh, so how is a residency like do you get free early So the residency at AIMS is actually pretty different from residency elsewhere, and uh, that is because we have a very academically oriented department, and a lot of it is done by the junior residents themselves. The uh, seminars, the journal clubs, a lot of it is on the junior residents. So although our work time is between nine to six, and that too is more than other colleges because we have afternoon clinics. Many colleges do not have afternoon special clinics. They have an OPD that gets over by one, maybe two. and uh, we have a lot of academia so even after getting home during junior residency 6 to 10 would usually be spent on the academia part of it but again that is not there in many other colleges and uh, that's fine too like the, being more academically oriented is not equivalent to being a better college or being a better course so yeah you will uh, definitely if you are uh, especially uh, if aims is concerned since it's a much more academic oriented institute even here you will get free by 6 that's the probably the maximum yeah. as a dermatologist you will work as a resident uh, in the hospital but yeah if you're going if you want to learn then there is no end to learning then you'll keep on studying whether you're here or there and yes. that will make a difference as uh, uh, how good a dermatologist you end up uh, becoming. becoming yes especially for medical dermatology for procedural like i told you everybody starts from the same footing after finishing their degree so it doesn't matter whether you have done your md or dnb as far as you are going into a private practice uh, you are at the same footing uh, and you have to do those uh, Uh, fellowships, fellowships or so training with another dermatologist which would be the same that i do and same that you will do yeah and so last question what does future hold what are the future prospects what does private practice nowadays right like so do? a lot of people think that the private practice is saturated but the thing is that uh, especially in tier 2 and 3 cities but including in tier 1 cities the demand for dermatologists and again procedures has also grown a lot so uh, the same with every other specializations like uh, we have more super specialists similarly we have more super specialists within dermatology as well we have pediatric dermatologists we have dermatopathologists so people are super specializing and they are getting a lot of patients but including procedural dermatology is a very much growing branch and uh, i don't think there's ever going to be a saturation because for example for hair transplant with the prevalence of androgenetic alopecia being you know up to even 50% the, there there are all these people who are now very much cosmetically oriented as well so as your uh, number of residents are increasing or number of dermatologists are increasing the number of people who are very concerned with their appearance are also increasing we have a larger number of men who come with uh, different facial changes with pigmentary changes so people are in general as a whole becoming more conscious of their appearance and as long as that is there there is always going to be a demand for dermatologists so there is no saturation there per se also uh, people feel that the amount of investment that you have to do for, for small procedural dermatology it's actually not much so initially you can probably tie up with a private hospital or you can have an overlapping practice between medical and procedural dermatology and as you get more financial stability you can invest more have your own small ot setup have your own uh, other setup to get, get a few assistants etc so hair transplant does require a setup but most people that we speak to they are able to earn back their investments in 2 to 5 years depending on whether they're investing in lasers etc that was one part that i didn't cover because it requires a separate training but again small fellowship but in order to practice it you will need to initially tie up with a place that already has lasers because buying and then practicing will actually not be very feasible at the beginning having said that you can always go towards it and earn your profit and 
So finally invest in a laser machine. Whatever you do, your investments will eventually get back to you in about two, maximum five years, in, irrespective of where you've done your training from initially. And uh, like I mentioned, in tier, tier two and tier three cities, it is almost equivalent the amount of money that you're earning in private setup because the affordability of everybody has increased as well. So all in all, I'll say that MD, uh, dermatology uh, is a uh, is the branch for you if you're considering an end branch. Don't want to do a super specialization. Uh, you want a good work-life balance. Want to get free by five or six maximum. And uh, if uh, and it's a very it's not a branch which is saturated. It is growing and it now is growing in a way that nobody expected. It has more grown into the plastic surgery aspects. Has a lot of the avenues yeah. there, and uh, you will have a good thriving practice, both private practice and. If you do want to go into, you can obviously go into academy as well as well. Mm -hmm. So a lot of options, a lot of uh, good things, and uh, so hopefully this video will clear a lot of your doubts about dermatology. I hope you enjoyed the video, and uh, if, if you have, you have any, any other questions, questions please you tell can us ask in, in the comments. comments. We will be happy to answer them. Thank you. Thank you, and have a nice day.